Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. I am Evangelist Deborah Gary here with the ministry today called Real Issues. I do believe that I have something for you on today. I believe it is going to be a blessing to you. I believe it is rich. And I believe that this is something that the Heavenly Father uh, 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 would feel like is timely, uh, especially in the day, especially in the hour that we are living in. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. While I'm doing that, if you will turn to Acts chapter 16, while I'm praying, turn your Bible to Acts chapter 16. Heavenly Father, I pray for the ministry of real issues, the listening audience for the ministry of real issues. I just ask for you to have your way. I ask for you to come in. I ask for your divine purpose be released even on this episode of today. I ask that you remember everybody and each and every one of those that are listening up today. I pray in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, that you will be that prayer answer, God, that they know you to be, that you will come through quickly for them. In the name of Jesus, I pray even now, Daddy, for a turnaround in the name of Jesus. Those that are struggling, those that are finding it hard, those that are giving up, those that are not sure, those that have questions, those that don't know which way to go. Daddy, I pray right now for a turnaround for them that you will come and be that 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 effective God that we know you to be in the name of Jesus. I pray and I'm thanking you by faith even now. If you will go with me to Acts chapter 16, if I had to title this y'all, I would call it It's essential and you're going to find out why it's essential go with me to chapter 16 in the book of acts i'm going to start reading at verse 25 i'll do this rather quickly i'm going to start at verse 25 i'm going to read it to verse 30 in the king james version you'll find these words and at midnight paul and silas prayed and they sang praises unto god and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, and suddenly, there was a great earthquake. I like the emphasis on that. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Verse 27, and the keeper of the prison, waking out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and he would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. 28, but Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. 29, then he called for a light and sprang in, came trembling, and he fell down down before Paul and Silas. Verse 30, and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Now, you know what? It's essential. Let me tell you something. A lot of us these days, you know, we might take prayer lightly we might think it's just a norm. It's just an average norm. It's just, you know, well, I confess to be a Christian, so I'll just say, you know, my blessing, or, or I'll just say, God bless you, you know, and things like that, and feel like, you know, we are being very effective, and feel like it's being very essential. But you know what? It took something more. It is essential that we come to daddy for who he really is. Not for who we portray him to be. Not for who we think he is. Not for who we want him to be. But for who he is. He is in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, the son of the most high God. They are alive. They are God. They are the highest. They are our creator. Amen. The Bible says over the book of Acts that in him we live, we move, and we have our being. It is because of who they are. It's because of who we are today. There would be no existence. There would be no life if it wasn't. 
for the Heavenly Father. Amen. Can I get an amen to that? So I just want to say that, you know, let's just not take Daddy lightly. Let's just not take him like 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 he's a, a king on a chessboard. Amen. He, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. He is our Father. Abba Father. He lives up above 34, 5, 6, 7 heavens. Amen. He is a God that loves you and the God that loves me. Amen. He is the God that wants a sincere relationship. He is the God that wants to come to know you one on one. And he wants you, is the way I should say it. He wants you to come to know him one on one. He knows all about us. Amen. But I, I, we, and I'm doing this too. We need to find out all about him. I know what's most important. I know that I know that I know how much he really loves you and I. He loves us so very much. A lot of us, we don't even begin to know what love is until we experience the love from the Heavenly Father. Amen. And you know what, y'all? Before I get into this, we need a relationship. You know you married to your husband. you married to your wife. You know you may have your boo or whatever, you know. And when the phone rings, you love hearing from them. When there's a knock on the door and you expect them, you run to the door, you love hearing from them. And that's how daddy is. You know, he loves hearing. Oh, my God. He loves hearing from us. And you may feel like, 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 okay, I don't know how to pray. I get that, you know. I, I, I've I, had somebody come to me, uh, uh, what was it, a few weeks ago, you know, a family member. And he was like, well, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to pray. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. The way you would talk to someone, you know, the way you would talk to your best friend, the way you would talk to your ace boom coon, you know, the way you would talk to your parents, you know, you go to daddy that way. Stir up a conversation. Talk with him that way. And I'm going to tell you something. He really likes it. I, I, and I, I'm just finding this. This is, this is just me. These are the hours that, you know, is not so much by choice all the time. Because daddy just got a way of just waking me up, you know, to pray at these hours. But like 3, 4, 5 in the morning, he just got this thing about waking me up. Sometimes I just be glad. I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. You let me sleep last night. Hallelujah. Thank you. You know, but, but he just loves for you to come to him and for you to just pray to him and remind him that you know that he is your God and your Lord. Can I get an amen? Praise God. Acts chapter 20, 20, I mean, Acts chapter 16, verse 25 and verse 26. What I really like, you know what? Let me read it one more time because I got to run in my mouth. And at midnight, Paul and Silas, Silas prayed. They say praises to God. The prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately, all the doors were open and everyone's bands, they were loose. Amen. One thing about prayer and why it's so essential is because it can leave you awestruck. By the time daddy gets through doing things, you know, answer prayer. The Bible says answer prayer is like a tree of life. You know, by the time that daddy gets through doing things for you because you found prayer to be essential, it can leave you all struck. You know, um, 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 there's a song that I love, absolutely love, and it says that I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand in awe of you. Daddy can leave you all struck. When you find prayer essential and you are doing that thing, it can leave you all struck. Another thing about, pr about prayer and why it is so essential is because the Bible says that even the prisoners, the prisoners has heard Paul and Silas. It can be effective. 
yourself. Prayer can be effective, not just for yourself, but it can be effective for your neighborhood. It can be effective for those in your household. It can be effective for those at your job. It can be effective for those around you. The Bible says that while Paul and Silas, that they while they were engaging in prayer and while they were engaging in singing praises, the Bible says that even the prisoners, those that were around them, amen, that it even affected them. How many know how essential prayer really is? It can change circumstances. It can change situations. It can change the way things are for you now. It can make things better for you. But you got to decree a thing. You got to declare a thing. You got to go before the Heavenly Father. You must come to Him in prayer. Why? Because He is alive. He is not dead. He is alive. Amen. He hears you. He is a God that sees. He is a God that hears. He is a God that answers. And sometimes he'll answer by fire. Why? He is a consuming fire. He is our father. He is our father. And he loves you so much. And I know there may be some, you know, we may not have had a problem. You find out, you know, I don't even have to do the statistics on this. I don't know who would know this. Who would know this? But you'll find that those that didn't have fathers in the home can be the most disruptive, can be the one that's out doing craziness, that's, you know, out for where they don't care. You know, because there was no father in the home. But I'm here. I'm here as Evangelist Deborah Gary to let you know that you do have a father. He is more than a father. He is a friend. If you will find prayer essential and pray to him, and not just find it essential to pray to him, but if you will open your heart. And if you would ask him, if you would ask Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the son of the living God. If you would just ask him to come into your heart. To dwell in your heart. To forgive you of your sins. And then confess him as Lord. You will find that he now, he now abides in your heart. He will now become your Lord. Nobody, listen to me, listen to me. Nobody will take a shower and then turn around and get in the bathtub. I, there may be a few that do that, but I don't think there's many. So in other words, what am I saying? What's the point I'm trying to get across? Come to him as you are. Just get in the shower. Just get in the tub. And he will bathe you and lather you up and cleanse you. And you will come out clean and smelling good when they get through with you. But come to them as you are. Why? Because our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we know how dirty and disgusting that can be. So let him cleanse you up. Don't think, you know, oh, I, I can do this myself. Baby, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. You got to come to daddy as he is. You got to come to daddy as you are and let him be the one to clean you up. Let Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, be the one that will come in and live in your heart. Amen. Number three, why is prayer so essential? It opens closed doors. You know, the Bible says, that while Paul and Silas, while they were praying and while they were praising, the Bible says that the prison doors, the prison doors, they were open. What are the prison doors? The doors that have been closed to you. The doors that have been locked to you. The doors that has never opened up for you. The doors that you don't have a key to. The doors that you feel are inaccessible. 
they can be opened up unto you with prayer and while you are praising God. The prison doors, those that seem inaccessible, those that seem like they are locked, those that seem like they are caged up, they can open up unto you. The Bible says that the prison doors were open. Prayer is essential. Amen. And before I go on with number four, before I go on, let me stop and say this, okay? It's good. It's the best decision anybody can ever make is to have Jesus come into your heart. To have Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. To know the Heavenly Father, the Creator. But you know what's even better? Can I just shed just a little more light? You know how a light bulb, a light bulb, they have 25 watts, they have 50 watts, they have 75 watts, they have 100 watts and things like this. And, and I'm sure it go on, you know. Let me go from 25 to like 50 or 75 watts. Let me shed just a little bit more light on this. Is that all right? Let me tell you something. It's best not just to have Jesus in your heart, not just to have him come in, but it's best. To have a relationship with them. It's best that you come to know him for yourself. Not mama taking you to church kind of know him. Not, you know, just watching TV or, and listening to the radio. You know, while you off in the kitchen, you know, making pancakes or dusting and mopping and things like that. No, I'm talking about. I am talking about a close up close personal relationship with Yeshua HaMashiach, with the Heavenly Father, Abba Father. It is best to have a relationship. He wants that. Listen to me. Listen to me. He came on a rugged cross, okay? It was his will. They couldn't stop him. You know, Peter told him once before, he said, look, he, you know, Jesus told him, he said, I can call legions of angels down. So it was his will. That he went to the cross for you and I. And do you know why the Bible lets us know? It is for the hope. Just the hope. That you would accept him. Let me tell you. He was unrecognizable. You wouldn't be able to know. If it was a man or a woman up there. You know. They beat him. Battered him. Bruised him. Busted him. Disgusted. Disgustingly so. He was so unrecognizable. It was blood and blood and blood. It was seven places where he shed his blood. And you know what? You and I, we can benefit from these, from these blessings that Jesus did when he shed and he sacrificed his supreme, his superior blood for you and I. Because he wants that relationship. It's just in hopes that you will accept him and have a close relationship with him. Better than that with your spouse. Better than that with your parents. Better than that with your best friend. He wants to be numero uno. He wants a relationship with you. I am telling you the truth. Let's go on. Another reason why prayer is so essential. Because things that bind you can be removed. The Bible says that the shackles were all loosened. The Bible says that the shackles, that they were loosed. So you know what? The things that Bind you can become loose. Amen. Prayer is essential. Number five. Look at this. I like this. Let me go with me over to verse uh, 26. The Bible says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately... All the doors were open and everyone's bands, they were loosed. One thing about prayer, one thing about prayer being so essential 
is that it can give you a suddenly. What is a suddenly? A suddenly is, I have to write this down, the Greek word is athnos, athnos. It is unexpectedly. It's like it just came out of nowhere. Prayer is so essential because it can bring you a, you and I, it can bring a suddenly. Prayer is so essential because it can also bring an immediately. What is immediately? Immediately is instantaneously. Immediately is right now. You don't have to wait for it. It is showed up now, instantaneously, straightway. Prayer is essential. It is essential. Now, uh, um, I've got a few more to share with you, but let me just say this. You know, as I'm just getting it, I'm just stopping, I'm just sharing it. Y'all, it is too late in the day. Too late. Too late. Okay? It's just too late. We got to know Daddy, the Heavenly Father. We got to know Jesus for ourselves. We must have a relationship. It's not going to get any better. I just can't see that happening. Not with Bible prophecy. But it can get better for you and I. You know, the Bible says that in verse, in Matthew 25, I believe it is, that you know that two can be like grinding at the mill or want to be taken and want to still be there. Listen, y'all, we need to be the one that is going to be taken. We need to be the one. There was 10 foolish, I mean, there's 10 uh, virgins and five were foolish and five were, about, were wise. You know, they looked after their oil. And the other words, they were out party, party, you know, and doing this, you know, and passing it and all that kind of stuff, you know, and, 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 and on the streets and what they feel was a good time, you know, and then would be at church on Sunday and felt like they'd a completed mission, you know, where they ready to start to do it all over again. No, those are foolish virgins, okay? We got to keep, um, we got to keep our oil full. We have to look after our oil. One of the ways to do that is this essential way is by prayer. By relationship, by knowing daddy, by living for him, by giving your life to him. The government cannot help you. They can, they can help you sustain, but they can't just help you. The Heavenly Father made us so that we can be dependable on him. And there is no other God but him. He has to be... He has to be first and foremost, not the presidents, not the vice presidents, not the daddy has got to be first and foremost. And let me say this while I'm here. I'm just going, let me just say this. It is very important that you vote. Okay. Uh, 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 the prophets, the prophets, you know, they're saying that, you know, things are trying to happen to try to keep us from voting, you know, but you better ask daddy, you better vote. Go to God. And you ain't going to have nobody to blame but yourself if you don't go to God and ask Daddy who you need to vote for. Who is the one that you need to vote for? But it is your right. It is your duty. And you better get out there and you better vote. Amen. It does count. Amen. Okay. Why prayer is essential. Let me go on. Uh, number six, prayer can confuse the enemy. Look at this. Let's go down to verse 27 in, Matt, in, in Acts 16. And the keeper of the prison, waking out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors open, drew out his sword, would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. He didn't know what happened. He didn't know where they was at. He didn't know what was going on. Now, here's the question I got. 
Listen, y'all. This is something. Listen, this is just coming to me right now. Right now. Listen, y'all. The Bible says it wasn't just an earthquake. Verse 26, I believe it was. The Bible, verse 25, the Bible says that it was a great earthquake that it shook the foundations. So this is kind of telling me. How many know where I'm going? How many know where I'm going? This is kind of telling me that when you in prayer and that when you in praise, that it can shake the very foundation where it needs to shake. How in the world could a great earthquake that shook the foundations, that opened the prison doors, that released the shackles off the prisoners, and the man was asleep? He slept through it? That when he woke up, he was delirious. He didn't know what was happening. And that's what daddy can do to confuse your enemies. He got you covered. He got you covered. Why? Because you know prayer is essential. And he can shake things to your favor. And the people out there that's one to harm you, that's one to hurt you, that's wishing you evil, whatever. I don't, I don't like talking about what the enemies are. Well, never mind all that. But you know what? They won't even know what hit them. They won't even know what happened. They won't even know, wait a minute, how did I miss that? What happened? Why didn't this? Why didn't that? It's going to leave them perplexed. It's going to leave them confused. Why? Because you know prayer is essential. Prayer is essential. I gotta hurry up. Lord Jesus, I gotta hurry up. And the other thing, the last one I want to talk about is that it can bring a turn of events. Prayer can bring a turn of events. The man, the 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 the, the guard that had the, the, the sword. He came to Paul and Silas. The Bible says that he had to ask for a light because, you know, when you have an earthquake, you know, all the lights and things are out. I'm sure it's going to be dark in that place, you know. And he went to Paul and Silas. And he got down on his knees and he said, what must I do to be saved? See, when you live it, when you know that prayer is essential and you live in your life for the Lord, it's going to have your enemies coming to you because they can't explain the, 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 inexplic the inexplicable. How in the world can you explain God? Only thing you can do, God has to say it this way, I am that I am. How can you really just, oh my God, he is, he is just, wow. I'm telling you, y'all. There's this ministry I'm a part of. Uh, uh, it's called the KOGGC, Kingdom of God Global Church, with Apostle David E. Taylor, uh, JMMI, Joshua Media Ministry Institute, with Apostle David E. Taylor. He's got these phenomenal, phenomenal videos and DVDs that you must call in and ask for. You should hear the revelation that he pours and gives out about daddy. He's, he has one-on-one -on -one visitations from Jesus and daddy. Uh, sounds like pretty frequent enough anyway. And you should call and get these things. I give you my word. It will revolutionize you. Call 877-843-4567. Ask for these things. Now, as I get ready to conclude, I don't know how I'm going to do this in three or four minutes, but I'm going to sure try. I am going to pray right now. And I am calling on the Lord Jesus, Jehovah Adonai, who is the Lord of Lords. I call on you to be our Lord, our, our majesty, that no one, no one should come before you. You are our Lord. I call on El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty, my God from on high. You are almighty, and we call on you to do those things and work those things where 
we are weak, where we need your strength, where we need you to come in, where we need you to fight for us. You are almighty. We can't do it ourselves. We call on you to for a divine intervention, to work those things out that, that we are not able to work out. We call on El Elyon, who is the most high God, for the Bible tells us that we should have no other gods before you. There is no other God before you. There is none. There is none like you, El Elyon, the most high God, the most high God. We call in on you today. Why? Because prayer is essential. Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. I'm asking for you now that you would come through the midst of chaos. Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. I'm asking for you now that you would come in the midst of confusion, that you would come in the midst where there is disturbance, and that you would bring your divine free peace, especially to those that are going through, that may have lost loved ones. Bring the divine peace. We call on you, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shammah. We call on you. God is there. Why? The Bible says that I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. So you know what? He's there. He's always there with us. It may we just can't see him, but he is there. I don't see wind, but I can hear it rustling. Amen. I know that the weather is changing. Amen. I know something is different, you know, but I can't see it. I can't see oxygen, but I know it's needed. Hydrogen, but I know it's needed. Amen. Daddy is there. Don't think because you can't see him. Don't think that he's not there. He is there. And don't think because, you know, you're, when you're going to him in prayer, that you literally just can't see another person there. He is there. Jehovah Shammah. He is always there. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner, our power, our protection, and our presence. We call on you now. Jehovah Nisi. I mean, I mean, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, our banner, we need you. We need your presence. We need your protection. Amen. We need your power. We are nothing, absolutely nothing without you. But with God and you, with God and I, we are the majority. I call on Jehovah Cana. The God that is jealous. I ask that you would forgive us for where, where, where we have done or put idols before you or prioritized before you. Jehovah Cana, the God that is jealous. I ask that you would forgive us even in this present time. Jehovah Shalom. I did that already. Jehovah Jireh, the God our pro. Fighter, I call on you now, and I ask, my God, I, I gotta get done. And I ask for your provision for each and every one that is listening, for each and every one that needs your divine provision where man can't do it, where we're finding it impossible. But it's easy with you. You said, "Is there anything too hard?" For my God. So we calling on you Jehovah Jireh. The God that provides. And listen. God daddy. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end. So I'm asking right now. Daddy we give you our lives. We give you the center of our lives, that we become in the midst of, of, of Alpha and then us and then the Omega, that we are in the midst of the first and then us and then the last, that we are in the midst of the beginning and then us and then the end. We want to be, what am I saying? We, God, you're so good. You're just too good. What am I saying? We want to be smack dab in the center. We want to be smack dab in the center of your will. Amen. I'm just going to leave it right there. There's nothing else for me to say. I am Evangelist Deborah Gary. God bless 
you. See you next time, y'all. Bye.